John, I want to go back over to you because we, we just quickly touched on the exhaustion of IPv4 address space. Could you give us a quick history of what happened? I remember that there was that point that we were coming to for, for 20, 30 years where we were saying we're running out of IPv4 address space. And there were all these requests for how do we best serve, uh, uh, solve this? How do we best make sure that we, we future-proof the internet, future-proof our networks? Oh, how did this come about? Who raised the flag first? And then how did we decide to solve it? So um, it's probably a, a little uh, ancient history at this point, but the Internet was uh, running on IPv4 since the beginning. Uh, we're talking about in the uh, late 70s, the Internet protocol is what was used to connect the ARPANET, the MILNET, CSNET, and then the National Science Foundation Network, which was the uh, precursor to the Internet backbone. Um, as commercial networks emerged, along with the NSF net, and interconnected and did peering amongst them, uh, in the early 90s, we noticed that the Internet was really taking off. In fact, there were forecasts in 1993 and 94 of how successful the Internet was. And we realized that just based on the earliest years and the growth rates, the Internet was going to run out of IPv4 addresses around... 2010 to 2017. This is based on the the um, geometric growth curves uh, and fits that we had done over various time periods. So it was actually back in the early 90s that the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, that does internet protocols like IPv4, like your mail protocol, SMTP, your BGP routing protocol, the IETF said, we need a new internet protocol created a working group called the IP Next Generation Working Group, or IPNG, which came up with, it looked at six or seven different proposals, weeded them down to two or three, had a bake-off, and in the end chose one of those proposals and anointed it IP version 6, the new internet protocol with 128-bit addresses. So that was the main force, the long-term initiative to fix the growth rate of the internet to make sure that when we ran out of IPv4, we had more options. The second thing we did at the same time was we were giving out address blocks in three sizes, what you call classes, class A, class B, and class C. And those classes were based on fixed boundaries. And we actually had to change the routing protocols and notation. And we introduced something called CIDR, C-I-D-R classless interdomain routing, which allowed us, instead of having to issue you 256 addresses or issue you 65,000 or 16 million, which were the size choices we had before, it allowed us to issue on any bit boundary. So we could issue an organization 256 addresses, but if they needed 400, we could issue them 512 and not have to go to 65,000. So the combination of issuing addresses on a better boundary condition instead of 8-bit boundaries, 1-bit boundary, uh, gave us more time, and then we used that to perfect IPv6. And IPv6 has actually been available in production now for some 14 years. So it's at the point now where uh, lots of organizations have just turned it on and use it. You might not even realize you're using it in some cases in your mobile phone or in your home router when you're going to sites like Facebook and Google.